So welcome uh, to this edition of Fiki Fast Forward. We have with us uh, today uh, Rudra uh, Chatterjee, who is the managing director of the Lakshmi Group and chairman of OBT. In fact, uh, you know, I was just looking at uh, some literature on the uh, tea estate, and it was uh, it was the first tea factory in India in 1859. Uh, so it's 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 one of the oldest uh, tea factories, uh, possibly not only in the country but also uh, in many other countries of the world. Uh, of course, uh, you were also uh, a carpet uh, manufacturer in 1920s. Uh, you're the largest uh, export company that uh, serves global customers. So if you look at the two sectors, you know, and over the last three months, uh, first let's we have a quick uh, roundup of the tea uh, industry. So, how has the tea industry done in the last few months, and how do you look at current uh, production or, or share or market, and what are the prospects going forward? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chennai. Uh, thank you for uh, having me today. Uh, the tea industry was under lockdown, like uh, rest of the country. Only difference is when you come out of lockdown as agriculture, you have no production. You have to skiff. the bushes what is you know use the knife and cut the top of the bushes and that takes a lot of time uh we were almost nil in april in north india significantly down in may and probably you know quarter of our production down in june so so far india's production which is usually 1.3 billion kgs we are probably down 175 to 200 million kgs so that's a significant drop in production um in terms of consumption our understanding is people are continuing to drink tea at home uh which is good but people aren't traveling out so they are not drinking the kind of tea that they would have consumed when they're out so it so happens that people tend to drink different kinds of tea at home and out when they're out as this dust grades uh that is what what is consumed when they're out and the leaf grades what is consumed at home So leaf grades are doing strongly. Dust grades are also doing well because the supply is down. Uh, but you know the tea industry has been a challenged industry before coronavirus hit. Uh, it the challenge will probably exacerbate. Uh, there is also uh, the issue of the millions of people in the industry. Luckily, it hasn't spread uh, very aggressively into the workers of the tea industry. uh the workers themselves uh, deserve a lot of credit for it they have been very vociferous in ensuring that the people who are coming in that quarantined and we as companies have you know taken on that mantle making sure that the worker clubs are quarantine centers the hospitals are operating so the first is as for any other industry making sure the health is good um health of the workers and uh, you know we will be back in business but it's going to be a challenging environment so uh, what are the three things that need to be done uh, you know for the tea sector to go back to its earlier days i mean what what could we, what could we do for the tea I sector think, i think the um, unfortunately it's not going to go back to the earlier days it's going to be a completely different world and uh, we have to prepare for that you know we have to ensure that you know we are able to value add package brand market ensure the certifications are right make sure that the tea business is making higher yield higher quality produce out of india as you know i have tea estates um, lakshmi tea has tea estates in rwanda the small growers of rwanda uh, make money based on the revenue of the tea the small growers of india make money based on the quantity of the tea so we have high quantity but you know essentially more and more low quality tea coming into the system we need to reverse that india is never going to be the cheapest tea producer in the world we have a chance with the best estates of darjeeling the best estates of assam to become the best tea producer in the world and it is important that india you know takes that on and has indian brands going global we have great indian brands within india but very few indian brands are able to move out of india and go global that is that, that is an opportunity I think the work that Fiki is doing with the tea industry is fantastic. You know, talking about the uh, need to modernize, improve yields, get the certifications right. There's something called Rainforest Alliance, which is essentially sustainable tea. All those factors are key, and I think uh, this is a chap time when you know after the uh, plague came the Renaissance. 
and this is the time that we need to you know reinvent and uh, revive the tea industry okay so just moving from uh, the tea and teas are normally had in the drawing room and you know you are a major uh, producer and supplier of carpets right and home furnishings also so how do you see this uh, sector uh, doing currently and what are the opportunities going forward the home furnishing sector firstly it's not a term that is used uh, regularly so i'll just define what it means anything that you have at home whether it is your lighting your carpets your furniture your curtains your cushions your upholstered furniture everything is part of a multi billion dollar in fact you know it's a, it's a massive industry um which india has an incredible opportunity to become the biggest player in. we have the skill set the creativity the workers the internal demand um uh, and from soup to nuts every input in the value chain can be made in india the fact is we are not even number 2 or number 3 the largest player by far is china when you come to furniture there's uh, united states and european furniture which is machine made then you come to uh, asian countries like vietnam indonesia so india is not even in the game when it comes to textile based home furnishings like carpets india is a large player but it's again uh, not across the board in home furnishings so one thing is like every other industry during the covid 19 phase uh, home furnishings got affected one of the reason is because the supply chain is global uh, different products comes from different parts of the world and uh, the wool needs to come into the carpets the wood needs to come into the furniture it the shipping lines has to be good those kind of things have all, you know at this time it is not a strength of india the logistics the you know the shipping speeds and those kind of things those have been a bigger issue during this crisis the opportunity is that maybe after the second world war when you know the department store concept you know took hold till today you know so many years uh, after we have made incremental changes away from the department store today it's probably going to become wholesale every store is shut most people are buying online the companies that have invested in their online sales their online product development their social media you know assets have taken the market share away from those companies uh, who haven't so uh, legends of the industry and this is not just in home furnishings but you know you have pr1 in us laura ashley um in retail in general neiman marcus in in our men's clothing you know uh, you know i'm sure many fikki members are familiar with brooks brothers you know uh, filed for bankruptcy so th- this channel you know reorientation is something that indian home furnishings companies needs to take advantage of it's also it's we have to think less as you know waiting to get orders order takers so to speak uh, and more to say we are creators we are designers we are coming up with new concepts new you know themes new processes and partner the customer to show them products that are innovative that is india strength that is where we will beat china we probably will not go input by input and outprice china but we can probably show the customer something that is more innovative more creative uh, naturals which includes jute hemp uh, many of the uh, sea salt sea grass these kind of products are in today you know those kind of products india should have you know we we have been using it in our homes for centuries those kind of products so that's where you know we have an opportunity in home furnishings you know take again this uh, time to reset uh, the channel is going to change the customers are probably going to change and we need to keep up and hopefully increase the market share um, the advantage of the home furnishings industry is it's a huge employer it uses you know the, the positive externalities are massive you know whether in terms of the guys who will get the orders for the wool you know many of them would be in rajasthan uh, the forest uh, dwellers who will be a- able to you know have a forestation program and make the kind of wood that is appropriate for particle boards and other uh, products so the it's it's, uh, it's it's not an industry that is going to just make money for itself but it will have 
huge implications for society, especially in the poorer parts of India. Carpet companies in India, for example, or furniture companies in India, have to reorient their business, have to reorient what they are doing. So, what would your advice uh, to be? You know, step one, two, three. Uh, you know, uh, to uh, the owners and the uh, you know people who are in this sector. So, I'll uh, if I can answer this question. Some you know thoughts for the owners, like you know companies ourselves, and also some things that um, the government can do. I think um, as you uh, have been part of these uh, meetings, it's been a big uh, push by the government and Fiki has been leading the furniture industry discussions. Um, in terms of owners, I think this is already something that we have started making the move, uh, you know, have the entire value chain in mind. The final consumer has to like the product. Like for example, instead of hoping that someone would give us, Walmart would give us a big order, we have to create the next Walmart ourselves. It's not going to be an easy thing, but that's where the value is going to be. And Indians themselves would buy our products and then we'll have to brand and expand. Uh, the second aspect, which is not as long-term, is you know we have to spend on product development. India has the NIDs, the NIFTs. We have you know many Indians uh, studying in Parsons and Rhode Island School of Design. And um, you know, there are great Indian fashion designers. My company, OBT, has, you know, worked with different fashion designers coming up with lines of carpets called Proud to be Indian, essentially taking the design of UP, uh, Chicken Kari, and, you know, Tarun Telani collaborated on it. Uh, Abraham and Thakur worked on the, you know, the, the, the tie and dye work of Ahmedabad. So those kind of activities, bringing the product as something that is desirable. It's not just a manufacturing product. The second issue is, as we are sitting and working from home, we will need to invest in a new set of furniture, a new set of um, you know, home furnishings. We have to design products based on what the new customer wants. The offices, the days of the open office uh, is no longer going to be comfortable. Even if this goes away, you know, people would want you know, more you know, privacy. And we have to design through that. So understanding the needs, making it accessible for the customer is what, as owners, we have to do. Also, from a financial perspective, we have to be a little more comfortable in keeping some working capital. The issue is when you don't get an order, you might have to maintain uh, inventory because you know the online uh, brand that you're selling through does not keep the inventory. Those are areas where Indian companies tend to say that, okay, I'm going to run the business in the you know, safest possible way. We will not keep any inventory. We will just take the order and I'm happy to keep a uh, you know, smaller gross margin. That is a mindset that we'll have to probably step out of. In terms of the government, even though everything in furniture can be made in India, there are huge impediments. You know, till 2014, furniture was categorized as a small scale industry. This is when Billion dollar factories were coming up the rest of the world. We had laws restricting any furniture factory from becoming you know, larger than small scale. Similarly, you know, labor laws and land laws and many other issues when it comes to carpets, when it comes to you know, lighting and many other. You know, so these are small shops out of Moradabad and Mirzapur and you know, Agra. And that's not going to take on you know, the largest companies of the world. So we have to understand that process. Secondly, we have to understand that what is good for the home furnishings industry is a massive opportunity. There might be some winners and losers in terms of you know, the raw material that comes in, the wood that comes in, the wool that comes in. We have to ensure, you know, as an optimizing exercise, how can Indian companies have a level playing field with other exporting countries? You know, that's without, you know, if, if it's a small gap of two to five percent, that is the maximum we can deal with. But if there's a 10 percent gap in costs, it's very difficult to overcome that because, you know, we are trying to grow from a position of disadvantage, which is difficult. So that's I think uh, the government is already working with industry in figuring that out. And industry themselves have to feel more confident that this is a growth industry. 
put in capital and put in creativity to make this industry grow the current uh, uh, furniture uh, sector in india is actually uh, you know uh, not optimum in terms of ca capacity utilization what could we do as a country to actually help them and what do we need to do to increase capacity utilization that's a great great point you know i i i've made this point before that uh, india's total exports is in the range of 1 and 1/2 billion dollars the global trade of furniture is 250 billion dollars so we are a tiny player but we are not going to get investments into furniture if the capacity utilization in the furniture industry is 50% so there's obviously something holding the industry back and those are number one uh competition from imports from countries uh which are selling very cheap and maybe dumping furniture you know this is not only true with furniture it is probably happening across the board in you know in many manufacturing industries but this is something that you know indian furniture companies um are faced with the second issue is getting raw materials because of the laws in terms of uh forestry laws and systems we actually stop an afforestation effort which would go as an input into the furniture industry and thus the wood which would have made you know three times or four times the amount of money for farmers in several states in india it's just uh you know you can you know plant the tree but you won't get permission to cut the tree but you need to have the wood uh for the uh, furniture so also in terms of um, having that traceability you know one other thing is when you have domestic furniture which is you know it's from unknown sources of wood it's non certified uh, wood non certified chemicals they are able to you know run that business so long as they are very small there is no incentive for them to become organized and formalized and so those companies are not going to become you know large exporting companies on the back of which the industry will develop so we have to have very clear rules of the game fair rules of the game have lower cost material produced out of india until then allow lower cost material imported into india which are inputs into the furniture industry and uh, restrict uh, only those kind of import where we feel that there's dumping we are not talking about restricting you know fair import if someone wants to buy a good piece of furniture anywhere in the world staying in india they should be free to do that but if there is you know anti competitive dumping of furniture into india that is something that needs to be restricted thank you we've actually covered a vast swath of topics from tea where you have talked about uh, needing to look at branding packaging and value addition uh, and getting a greater return to the plantations we've talked about the furniture fishing and the carpet mm -hmm. sector and the furniture sector where again you've talked about design the need uh, to you know change your business practices uh, go online uh, mix indian with modern and then a whole set of things regarding to certification plantation of wood etc to uh, take up and increase the capacity capacity utilization of the uh, furniture uh, sector but very interestingly in both the segments you actually said that india can be amongst the best and the largest in the world and i think that's where you have talked about the government and industry working together uh, to take this forward so thank you very much for your time and thank you for sharing information and also thank you for giving your advice to the owners of factories of what they need to do so thank you very much thank you thank you mr chinna